All right, what is going on, Chiefs Kingdom? Welcome back to the KC Sports Report. I'm your host, Michael Darcy, and today I'm going to break down some of the best offensive lineman prospects in the 2021 NFL Draft. So, I made a video talking about some of the best tackles in the draft class a couple weeks ago, and uh, to a lot of people's dismay in the comments, I missed a few key prospects. So, uh, like the uh, good reporter that I am, I decided to make another video. Uh, I put a lot of time and effort and research into this video, so if you do enjoy it and like this draft content, hit that like button, comment, and subscribe for more of the best Chiefs content on YouTube. We're going to do a lot more draft coverage. Um, I'm going to cover post-draft, all that kind of great stuff. We're going to do a live mock draft sometime soon in the next week, and also we're going to do a live draft party, so come on by. We're going to watch the draft together, uh, and I'll give my instant reaction to who gets picked, but without further ado, let's get into the first prospect that I have on my board, and that is left tackle from North Dakota State, Dylan Reduns. Some people say Reduns, I say Reduns. This dude has good strength, good toughness, but he's got very average athleticism, and you know, I watched a lot of tape on him he's not that good in pass protection he's more of a, a run blocker um obviously uh Trey Lance went to North Dakota State so uh he kind of had to block for him but I, I really don't think that he's going to transition to be a great um pass protector at the next level um he's got good traits of a good lineman but I don't really think that for what the Chiefs need I don't think that he fits that I think that he's going to be an elite um an elite run blocker at the next level but I don't know if that's really worth it um, for the Chiefs to take in the first round. And, and I've also seen a lot of uh, mock drafts where this dude goes early in the first round. So it really depends on how the draft shakes out. Because you might be even able to get this dude in the second round. Um, I, I'm not sure if he'll be there. But if he is there in the second round and you've already got your tackle, you can either draft him or uh, get somebody else. But I think that this dude, in my opinion, would not be a very solid pick. Um, I like a lot of other players on this list that I think could be much better players um, in this system. So the next player is one that I'm very fond of, and that is Brady Christensen, a left tackle from BYU. And this dude is a monster. He's 6'6", 300 pounds. He ran a 4'8", 9", and he benched 30 reps at his pro day. I mean, this dude has all the intangibles. Um, a lot of people think that he doesn't have very good athleticism. Um, but, uh, kind of like, uh, what was his name? Dylan Reduns up on the first, uh, prospect on the list. They both guarded two of the most, uh, highly anticipated quarterback prospects in this draft. Obviously, uh, Reduns had, uh, Trey Lance at North Dakota State and, uh, Mr. Christensen had, uh, Zach Wilson at BYU. So when we look at Zach Wilson, I know this is kind of getting off topic, but when we look at Zach Wilson, we see somebody who is very explosive, can move out of the pocket, make plays with his feet. Uh, kind of similarly to Patrick Mahomes, we're not going to talk about that too much. But uh, So I see a guy that's very mobile and uh, hard to defend on the run. Now, the the knock on Christensen's actually the exact opposite um, than Redunds. This dude is not that great in run blocking, but he really excels as a pass blocker. And, you know, I think this dude might be there in the third or fourth round, and I would love this pick. I think that a lot of people are sleeping on him. They say that he doesn't have very good athleticism. I personally don't see it. I think that he set the uh, combine or the pro day record for uh, the longest broad jump. So I, I really don't have any questions about his athleticism. Uh, another reason why scouts don't like him is they say he's, his arms are too small um, by like a fraction of an inch. So I'm not really buying into all that uh, negativity. I think that he'd be a very good pickup in the later rounds. And uh, um, this is a dude that might be able to start at left tackle week one. I don't know if he's necessarily all the way there yet, but... If you do get him as a developmental prospect, this dude's going to have a chance to be a very good offensive lineman at the next level, um, and I think that'd be a very good pickup for the Chiefs in the later rounds. Now, the next player is one that's very interesting, and that is a uh, a love tackle coming from Stanford, and his name is Walker Little, and this dude is absolutely massive. He's 6'7", 313, uh, obviously from the numbers that I just read, he's very big in stature. Um, and he's honestly, he's a pretty good prospect. A lot of people say that he's got first round talent, but the only problem is we haven't seen any Walker little tape in quite a while. Um, he was injured, not last year, but the year before that he had an ankle, um, injury, or maybe it was an ACL. I think it was an ACL. And then last year he opted out due to COVID. So we have not seen any Walker little tape in the past two years. Um, but shout out to my boy Ash Raider. He is a uh, a Stanford fan. He really likes this guy, and he thinks that he could be a good left tackle at the next level. But he also said, um, and, and from the tape that I watched, it's pretty clear that I don't think that he's a starter day one. 
I think that he needs some work. Obviously, we need to see what kind of shape he's in. He hasn't played football in two years. But I also think that the Chiefs need somebody a little bit more developed. And I think that for what we have in uh, terms of needs, I don't think that this would be a good pick in the first. I really don't. Um, maybe if he falls to the third or the fourth, I wouldn't be against taking him. But the biggest problem in my mind is his injury history. And I don't think that that's really enough um, to overcome for me. So I personally would pass up on Walker a little due to the, the injury history um, and lack of film. But uh, I wouldn't be mad if the Chiefs took him. Now, the next player is one that's also very intriguing. That's a left tackle from Florida in Stone Forsyth. And, you know, I wasn't really doing a ton of tape on him uh, until I was kind of put on to him by uh, actually a couple fans of the show. So I appreciate you guys for uh, shouting him out. This dude's a massive. I mean, he, he is one of the biggest linemen in the draft. He's 6'8", 307. And in my opinion, he's perfect for this system. He excels as a pass blocker and... You know, actually, his his uh, biggest knock on him is that he's not that good in uh, run blocking. But, you know, I don't really think that for what this offense does, they don't really need a great run blocker. They just don't. And I think that this dude, when you watched him on tape, he just bodies the d defensive ends. He, quite frankly, just shoves his hands out there, and they can't get by him because he's so big and strong. Um, but actually, it's funny that his strength, which is one of his most uh, uh, valuable features is often looked on by scouts as one of his biggest downfalls. He's so big and strong that uh, he, he's a little bit slower than the, than the average lineman, and he sometimes gets caught up with that. But I personally think that uh, this is a dude that's going to go in the later rounds. Um, I do think that he's going to be one of the uh, premier third or fourth round linemen coming off the board. He might, not even, he might even slip to the second round. Um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily like this pick, uh, if we got him in the second, I think that that'd be a little bit too early, but if he's available in the third round and we've got our, uh, our, our left tackle in the first, I think that this dude would be great because if he does not play left tackle in the league, you can move him inside at guard. So I think this guy would be a solid pickup, but, uh, I would understand if the chiefs passed him up. Now the next person is not a tackle. It's uh, actually Alabama center Landon Dickerson. And you know, this is a guy that I was going to cover in my last video, but I talked about Creed Humphrey instead. Um, Alabama is very good at producing offensive line talent. We know this. Um, Landon Dickerson is not an exception to that. He was one of the best centers in college football. Um, he actually graded out, I think, the second best in the draft behind Creed Humphrey. Um, and the majority of the reason why he's even... Um, worth talking about in general is because he got injured so much al at Alabama. That's a tongue twister at Alabama that uh, he slipped on so many draft boards. I think he tore his ACL twice. I um, mean, had an ankle injury a few years ago. So the biggest problem with this dude is obviously his health. I think that if he was completely healthy, he's a first round pick. But since he's had this long injury history, he's been mocked as a second or even a third round draft pick. Now, I know the Chiefs kind of had their center uh, under control this year with Austin Blythe, but I wouldn't even be against taking this dude if he's in the later rounds. But just like Walker Little, the main concern that I have is his injury history. And I don't think that uh, this dude is really... I don't know if he's worth the pick because of how often he's been injured, um, but he's got really good technique and athleticism. Uh, he can take on bull rushers. He's more of a, uh, a pass pro um, center. But again, I just don't think that his injury history is enough of a reason to pick him. I, I think that's kind of uh, uh, his biggest weakness, so to speak. So uh, if I'm the Chiefs, I'm passing him up, but I wouldn't even be mad if we took him. Now, the final player on my board is James Hudson, a left tackle from Cincinnati. Now, he's been projected as a fourth-round pick. Some mocks, they've had him go in the fifth or the sixth. This dude is very athletic, but the biggest problem is he's so raw. And he's so raw and inconsistent. Um, at left tackle, that that's why he's not in a uh, a second round uh, position. This dude is very athletic. Like I said, I think that he's got potential to be very good in this league. But the problem is he's so raw and he's so inexperienced and he's got so many uh, flaws in terms of uh, uh, dropping back that I don't really think this is a good pickup. I mean, if he falls to the sixth and you need a second left tackle, I guess pick him up. Uh, I'm not really a big fan of him, though, because I just think that he's so much of a project that it's really not worth it for the Chiefs. I mean, he's athletic as hell, but I, I just don't think that he's really worth it. So, Chiefs Kingdom, that was kind of my thoughts on some of the other left tackles and interior offensive linemen that were uh, left on the board. 
Now, trust me, there still is a bit more to cover in terms of uh, receivers. Um, maybe I'll get into the... Uh, uh, I got into the linebackers already. I'll probably get into the tight ends at some point as well. But uh, I appreciate you guys watching this video. The support, as always, is very much appreciated. Um, and I, I think that I'll see you guys either this Friday or this uh, next Thursday um, to watch the NFL Draft live with you guys. So I appreciate you guys watching this video. And have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed it, hit that like button, comment, and subscribe for more of the best Chiefs content on YouTube. You can also follow us on Instagram for more of the latest updates on future videos, as well as instant Chiefs news right after it happens. You can also support the channel via the Patreon, as well as buying merchandise um, from the KC Sports Report store on Teespring. The links to all of those websites will be in the description. You just listened to the KC Sports Report, presented by Michael Darcy.